in this entire section, we're going to look at cash. Cash flow, we're going to introduce definitions. We're going to start with working capital and liquidity. Liquidity is very important to a company. Cash, it's the most important thing for a business to have. It supports that business cycle and also enables the company to expand in the future. Because to expand, a company needs to make the working capital cycle work. And each step of the working capital cycle needs cash. Um, we tend to use the word liquidity to talk about how much is available. And that liquidity includes current assets, current liabilities. It's multi-dimensional. Sometimes when we look at the basic accounting terminologies, we get one perspective of it. But I'd suggest to you with liquidity, the dimensions to look at are quantity, timing or velocity, the speed, and then the quality of the liquidity. So I want you to keep in mind all three of these that it's multidimensional, especially in the management of the cash of the firm. It's all about the different dimensions. You can't just look at one. When we look at working capital, here's our cycle once again. Raw material, finished goods, counts receivable cash, cash out, cash out, cash out, cash in, start the cycle. This needs money or cash liquidity throughout this. There needs to be sufficient liquidity for it to run and to grow. So we define working capital as current assets less current liabilities equals working capital. Here's a very simple example. They got a billion, million seventy-five, um, 550 in liabilities, current liabilities. Okay, this isn't capital, this is current liabilities. Gives us working capital of million two. That's the amount of liquidity a firm may have, okay? So that is also referred to, we have the current ratio, which is current assets divided by current liability. Um, this tells us the quantity of the liquidity. Um, should be greater than one to maintain the current level of sales, you need more to grow. The historical definition is if it is one or more, they could sell the current asset assets and pay off their current liabilities. No, 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 no. That's, that's not, that's a definition. That's a textbook definition. But that ignores the fact that there's a timing and quality issue. It's also not as relevant to use that definition because the firm is a going concern. So why would you sell off your assets to pay off your liabilities if you're staying in business. Okay, so we got to take that into account. Then we have quality of working capital. Um, cash is best, it's always worth 100%, so the quality is good. Now, with accounts receivable, there's a chance that some won't be collected. It's a function of the age of receivables and the credit of a customer. So if the customers all, if those receivables, when you age them out, we find they're all over 90 days, well, the chances of them being collected are not very good. So there's implicit quality within that. And we use ratios, which we'll talk about in a bit, to measure that quality. Inventory, again, how fast is it turning over? How old are the items that we have? Okay, and you look at it, raw materials, work in process, finished goods. The value of the raw materials is you still need to add value to make them saleable. Work in process is just that. It hasn't been brought to the finished stage, so you have to expend more funds to realize the value of that work in process. When we look at finished goods, with the finished goods, is there obsolescence? How long has that been in inventory? Do the customers still want that product? So all three of these impact the quality of working capital. We assume that all liabilities, are you gotta pay them off 100%. So the quality is on the asset side. We look at the receivable turnover. It's an activity ratio. Very simple. 
sales divided by accounts receivable. How often do they turn over? We look at aging of receivables, percentage and by dollars, 30, 60, 90 days past due. These are internally prepared. We can't do this as an external observer. We can on the first three. So when we look at this, um, that is, these are the ratios that are key to understanding that, but it's within the context of liquidity. When we look at the collection period, it measures the credit and collection efficiency of the firm. Okay, The longer that cycle is, the collection period, it may be increase, it's may, firm may not be efficient in collecting the receivables. There may be increases the probability of bad debt. Uh, but we need to look at them over time to see whether something's getting better or what it's being worse. And compare it to the industry. What is the industry doing? If the ratio is too high, okay, it can indicate inefficiency or decision to allow loose credit skills. So you need this balance. It should be, it's, it's also looked at within an absolute return because it needs to be consistent with the firm's term. Some companies sell with 30 days. If it's 30 days, you should be under 30 days in your collection period. Okay, but that's based on the terms. So if we're looking at a restaurant, think about how you pay in a restaurant. You generally pay using cash and or a credit card. Credit cards are collected in a day or two. So if we were to look at a restaurant company, we would expect the collection period to be a day or two, if it's even listed on the financials, okay? Because it turns fast. So if we saw a McDonald's with accounts receivable of 20 days, something's wrong because they don't sell it. So we always gotta come back and be consistent with the firm's terms, okay? So now, again, some of this is, is so what? Well, what can we do to fix that? Well, we can either change the terms of sales, either shorten when the payment is due, shorten or lengthen. We might inject a cash discount to get people to pay faster, or we may eliminate it because people are taking advantage of it and it's getting paid very quickly. There could be more, we could have more systemic improved collection follow-up, or on the other hand, relaxing of payment demands, adding a professional credit manager, obtaining credit insurance, develop options, okay? So those are some of the things we can do when we see some of these ratios being When you come back to liquidity, we're gonna look at inventory. So we got cash, accounts receivable, inventory, and prepaid expenses for the most part. Cash is already in a liquid form. It takes a period of time to collect receivables. When we look at inventory, it takes time to process that. So the first thing we're looking at with inventory is total inventory divided by working capital. What percent of inventory comes, what percentage of working capital is by inventory? We don't want to see a huge percentage of working capital come from inventory because that may slow us down and may require more. Okay, so we look at the inventory conversion period right from the cash conversion cycle to speed. We look at inventory turnover, cost of goods sold divided by inventory. We take a look at it relative to inventory to net sales to inventory, sales divided by inventory. <coughs> net sales to inventory, it's really telling us how efficient the merchandising is. A low ratio can be meaningful here because it means you're not turning as much inventory. So if inventory is sitting, we may have physical deterioration of inventory, uh, obsolescence of inventory. You could have prices changing in the market. It could be seasonal variations. You could have uh, overvaluation, unsaleable inventory. So this becomes important to, because the quality, the, the longer, the more you have an in inventory relative to conversion cycle time relative to working capital, we have these risks. So you want to look at it, but within the context of a business. 
If we're looking again at a restaurant business, we should see inventory turnover multiple times a lot because it's all fresh fruits and vegetables and meats. So we have <coughs> that. So what can you do? So these are the what the signals may be. What's the procedure? Well, you study the inventory records to detect if you have items that are no longer selling. <coughs> look at the <coughs> look at the components and go deeper. Establishment of a per perpetual inventory record, meaning that's always updated based on the point of sale system. Um, you purchase a merchandise on consignment that you don't pay for. It. You could do that. Uh, you could have loans on inventory to better fund the working capital. You may delegate the purchasing and inventory control function to others. You could look at this warehouse layout and storage areas and say, is it laid out the best way to be efficient? Promotion of increased sales. Could you hold the inventory the same while increasing sales? Is there any compensating advantage? So we look at all of these. These <coughs> ratios are important causal ratios to the ability to obtain sales, profitability, and borrowing. We've looked at the quantity of working capital, which is current assets, less current liabilities, that tells us how much we have to support the cycle. We looked at the quality of it. The last one that we want to look at is what's the speed of liquidity? How fast does it turn over? And when we look at that uh, from an operating cycle perspective, we have days in inventory where you're getting it, making it. Then you have the days in receivable but our vendors have given us days to pay, so the net of the three of them is the cash conversions cycle, which is the velocity of how fast it is moving. Inventory days, our average inventory in a year, divided by the annual cost of sales, times 365. Receivables, average receivables in a year, annual sales, times 365. Payables days, how much are our vendors giving us to pay? That it means that we have less cash coming out. So that's the speed of liquidity. And when you think about it, these two are how many days are cash tied up in operations, less how much we didn't pay. That's the number of days. So again, a cash conversion cycle is spent, set, is expressed in days. So we have some of this involved, when we look at it, the first one is in dollars, the second one is in percents and ratios, and the third one is in days. So what we're trying to do, and let's just do a quick summary here, is that working capital cycle, which is calculated in days, refers to the time that the organization can convert its net current assets and current liabilities in cash. Okay. The shorter that cycle, the faster the company is able to free up cash. So we think about it, we have cash, receivables, payables, and inventory. So we have that cycle. But if we can reduce the working capital cycle, uh, we can do such things as reduce the credit period given to people to pay, um, increase sales to reduce time to convert inventory, finished inventory to sales, increase the credit period. We could also need to go out and find more financing, but we need working capital to grow. We can't sustain a business with a, with a shortage of working capital. It'll create problems. But we want to go, and if a company wants to grow, if a company wants to be successful, they need to grow. I'm going to just take a minute here and say, you know, some of these were ratios. And a couple of ratio guidelines for using ratios. The purpose of them is to help us better understand the firm and identify strengths and weaknesses. It's only meaningful within the context of the company's business cycle relative to their industry. Okay? In in if an inventory uh, the speed of a bakery that bakes bread inventory is going to be a lot faster 
than a car manufacturer or an airplane maker. So we have to look at within context of that, context of their customers, which is important. Trends are more important than an individual ratio. Okay, so we want to look at trends over time. Is it getting better? Is it getting worse? Is it staying the same? Um, we want to recognize seasonal factors, okay? Um, and I think we can look at that as in, we just got through the spring when garden centers have a lot of garden supplies. Garden supplies in January in upstate New York aren't going to be there. So we got to look at those. Um, we have to ignore isolated figures, okay? If there's one thing that's bad and it's only a point in time, we need to look at that and maybe move on. As I did say, comparison to industry average is helpful because it's a guidepost. Ratios are intended for us to think and to be able to go deeper. So we're going to study, you want to study any substantial material deviation. A lot of this is what cost accountants are doing. They use these to identify areas that need further work. This one is <laughs> uh, important number. A ratio has both a numerator and denominator. You need to look at both. What has changed in the numerator? What has changed in the denominator? Okay. Be alert to compensating advantages. Um, and then look at ratios within context. So what I'm going to look at next is we're going to take a look at within this ratios, now that we've looked at ratios, is there's something called cause and effect. Cause is why something happens. Effect is what happens as a result. So we have causal ratios. These affect profits, net worth, working capital, liquidity, and debt. And then there's the effect ratios, liquidity, leverage, profitability. Um, in the liquidity ratios that we've talked about, um, we have the current ratio, which tells us the quantity of liquidity, working capital, both in dollars and in the ratio. Cash conversion cycle is timing of liquidity. Inventory working capital, quality of liquidity. Receivables to working capital, quality.